All right, in this video, we'll finish our discussion on the slope intercept form for graphing a line, and we talked about slope earlier. Um, so we'll do a couple more problems where we graph a linear equation use the, using the slope intercept form, which is again our preferred method. It's the quickest form normally, especially if an equation is already in slope intercept form. And then we'll do a couple of applications in uh, the two bottom problems here. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So uh, I need to solve for y, so I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides. I'm trying to get this equation in slope-intercept form. So it's going to be y equals negative 2x minus 1. So our slope is negative 2. I'm going to go ahead and write it over 1 since I'm going to be graphing here. And our y-intercept is 0, negative 1. So we start at 0, negative 1. And then we're going to go down to and write 1. And there's our point, and there's the graph. And again, I could go down 1, or down 2, write 1 again, and I'd keep landing on the line. I could find as many points as I wanted. All right, I would encourage you to, to do B. Um, some students struggle with solving an equation for Y. Or really, what we're doing is re, uh, it's called manipulating the equation so that it's solved for Y. So see if you can do that on B, and then uh, and try graphing it, and then watch the video. All right, so you should have subtracted 5x on both sides first, because basically we're right now we're trying to get the y term by itself. So we got to get rid of that 5x term, and then we have negative 3 times y. I need to get rid of the negative 3, and the opposite of uh, multiplying by negative 3 is dividing by negative 3. Notice how I show division when I do this. And so we get y on the left. Now negative 5 over negative 3 is a positive 5 thirds. And 6 divided by negative 3, that's negative 2. So we'll write that as minus 2. So our slope is 5 thirds, and our y-intercept is 0, negative 2. So we'll go ahead and graph 0, negative 2. And then we're going to rise 5 and run 3, and that puts us, puts us there, and there's your line. All right, on number 9, it says the population of Cleveland, Ohio, Ohio decreased from 478,403 in 2000 to 390,928 in 2012. Find the average rate of change in the population of Cleveland, Ohio over the 12-year period. Okay, so first of all, we have a formula for rate of change. It's the change in y over the change in x. Now you may recall when we were talking about slope, that was also change in y over change in x. The main difference though with the rate is that you're going to have two measures. So I'll give you some examples of rates. An example would be how many miles per hour. Or another one would be the cost per pound. So notice we have two measures in each of these slopes. All right, or, or this ratio, this fraction, this rate of change. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, draw a little graph. And so basically, I've, you could think of these as points, you know, and, and this was the population in 2000. This was the population in 2012. And so we could actually think of these as points. So in 2000, we were at 478,000, give or take. Notice um, the 500 there actually stands for 500,000. And then my other point, in 2012, we were at 390,000, so a little bit short of 400,000. Again, we're just uh, saying to the, these are in thousands. All right, so what we have here is two points. And in fact, all we're doing now is finding slope, but we're going to write our answer as a rate. And so this is 390,928 minus 478,403 over 12 minus 0. 
and you end up with negative 87,475 divide 12. And by the way, notice the numerator is the number of people, and the denominator is the number of years. And so our final answer when you divide by 12 here is minus 7,290 people per year. So the decrease in the population, it's going down that much each year. All right, so 10 is a little bit different, but I think uh, I'm guessing a lot of you have seen problems like this before. I would encourage you to see if you can write an equation for that and then determine the cost for 72 people and then watch the video. Now, if it's not at all familiar to you, then just watch the video. All right, so let me move this just a little bit. Let's see. Um, so the cost of using a banquet room, so cost, is $1,500 plus $1,575 per person. So the cost is or equals $1,500 plus 1575 per person. Now there's X people, how would I write 1575 per person? Well, you would actually say 1575 times X. Now if X is one, then you'd be paying $1,500 plus one times 1575. There's just one person. If X were two, you'd be, your cost would be 1500 plus 1575 times two. And so that's how it works. I'm actually going to write this as a function. C of x equals 1500 plus 1575 times x. Now I'm using function notation, but I could have just used C for cost, or we might have even used y. If you used y, that's fine. It just said write an equation. And so now we need to find the cost for 72 people. And so I'm just going to plug in 72. Okay, so there's our equation. We have 72 people, so we're plugging in 72 as an input. And when we do that, our output is $2,634. So that'll be the cost for the 72 people. All right, and that's it for this video.